everybody, good morning. Thank you for joining us and welcome to Down to Earth with Harriet Kamek. This is the show in which we talk about the issues that matter. And of course, this morning we have a hotbed issue that is circulating and has been the news in the Detroit area recently. And it's a story in the Detroit news about homeowners, black homeowners being overtaxed. As you know, Detroit has seen something of a renaissance in recent time. I mean, we have seen the city has gone through bankruptcy, emerged from bankruptcy, had a, uh, a crisis management team. And now an investigation by the Detroit News is showing that Detroit, black Detroit homeowners have been overtaxed between the period 2010 and 2017 by as much as 600 million. Uh, of course, the mayor is mum, because of course he's defending what he has done. This is his second term. He's in his second term. So he's been around since for quite some time, right? For a little while. So a lot of the blame overlaps his administration. The period under investigation overlapped his administration. So he has some explaining to do. But of course, being a politician. So we're going to go into why this is so. And what does it mean for other communities around the country similar to Detroit? Right? So we're going to talk about that. But in the meantime, there, there's lots to talk about. I mean, right here in Michigan this week, we're facing a snowstorm. Hi. This was covered on the most recent podcast of Reveal. Oh, really? Okay, good. But, uh, and thank you for pointing that out. Right? But uh, in the meantime, so for those of us who don't work tomorrow, get ready because we're, or if you have to go out in the morning tomorrow, there'll be a snowstorm in Southeast Michigan. So winter came roaring back. So if we thought we were having spring in late December and early January, that just went out the door. It's, it's winter again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Think about that for just a second, right? Oh, you're not in Michigan. That's how you first heard about it. Okay. We actually saw it, uh, the Detroit News uh, published a story last Saturday, and it was quite the thing around here. When the story first came out, it was quite the thing. It was quite something else. It's, it's mind-blowing. But it, it, it's amazing. Isn't it amazing, though, how these things come out? How is it being received? You'd be surprised how it's being received. The people are kind of numb. To the idea of it why because homeowners in detroit most people in detroit who are homeowners have lived here for decades right and so most of them inherited the homes from parents or grandparents or some people bought homes after the crash of 2008 2009 so the people are numb basically they're just numb to the idea i mean when i look at the taxes for a detroit home compared to other cities around, it's mind-blowing. It, it's just simply unbelievable. And the taxes, the thing about it is the taxes on a Detroit home with an average value of $10,000. So you're paying taxes of $2,400 on a value of $10,000? Does that make sense? And if you go to the Detroit Land Bank, which is an organization that was set up after uh, at, under the last administration, not under the Dugan administration, they set up a Detroit land bank which took over the ownership of the abandoned homes. Now let me put it into perspective. After the crash of 2008, Detroiters fled because they were they were in properties that they were underwater for. Right? The pro they had so much mortgage, and they found out that they were overpaying on mortgage and their properties were not valued that much. You know how that works, right? So people could not meet their mortgage. After the crash, the auto industry went and everything went with it. Michigan was dead on arrival. People fled Detroit. So a lot of homes became abandoned, which presented a problem for the rest of the people who owned their homes, like seniors who had lived in their homes for a while, right? So the homes became abandoned. They were taken over by rodents and all kinds of stuff, garbage piled up. They weren't cleaning the streets because they claimed they didn't have any money to run the city. But we know that one of the previous mayors had taken a lot of the money out of the city, Kwame, the one who was in jail, right? 
And so the, there was nothing going on. So now the people who own homes now tend to be either descendants of those folks or people who have always lived in their homes. So you have an average home value of ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000. You might buy in, and Detroit is a big city. It's the largest, I am told that Detroit is a, is, is a large, big city, like bigger than San, San Francisco, right? It's the combination of two boroughs in, in Manhattan, two boroughs in New York, right? So it's a huge city. So there are different pockets in Detroit. There's the University District, there's English Village, and there's some other places where property values, despite going down and despite being lowered, was still not the way that it should have been, right? So you're looking at, but the, in this report, what they focused on were just average homes, right? They did a focus on 63,000 properties and you can find that information anywhere on the web. You can literally go to the Detroit Land Bank and see what I'm talking about. The Detroit Land Bank has a website. You can Google it and you'll see their website, right? Go to their website and see what the average property value of a Detroit home is. People are paying taxes that are ridiculous. What happened with the overtaxing is that the overtaxing sent people into tax foreclosure. So imagine now the city overtaxes you and then when you couldn't pay the taxes because unemployment was high and people didn't have jobs to pay the ridiculous taxes then they sent the property into foreclosure that's where the scandal came in and that's what the detroit news uncovered uh so let me see this a democrat ran so let me see what you're all saying uh how is it being received democrats robbing taxpayers whoa the mayor basically said he could do nothing about the past he could only help the future which is okay i'm not surprised the system is bad some part of psychopathic racist agenda crooked democrat mayor sats it meanwhile they overtaxed the tune of almost a billion dollars wow that they tax the elderly and poor out of the market oh you hit the nail on the head this caused a big problem earlier about two or three years ago when it was discovered that the Detroit Land Bank, actually the mayor himself, the current mayor, got caught up in a scandal because he was part of the Detroit Land Bank and they got the money from the feds and took the money for themselves. But he's still the mayor, right? And th But this is part of a bigger problem. This is part of what is referred to as redlining, where they tax black homeowners out of properties so that black folks and poor black people cannot own property. We do know that owning property and owning a home is the, is, is the launch pad to creating wealth. It's the launch pad to creating economic stability, not just for you, but also for the generation after you. So it's no surprise then that blacks and poor blacks are taxed and that redlining became the issue. They've used redlining. I mean. Let me just get personal with you for a second. Can I just get personal? A few years ago, there's a, there's a neighborhood in Detroit called Corktown. Anybody knows where that is, right? Corktown was first established by the Irish in the 1800s, right? Nice homes, they're huge. Nice homes, they're, you know, really nice neighborhood. Well, talk about gentrification. A lot of the folks who lived in that neighborhood could not afford the taxes on their property. So guess what happened after 2008, 2009? Are you all ready for this? This happened also in the Boston Edison District. Are you all gonna be ready for this? Guess what happened? The banks who had owned those homes still retained the deed on those homes despite people having walked away from them, right? Guess what the banks did? If there were still people in the home struggling to make the tax payments and the mortgage, the banks sent people around when the gentrification started, when they sent the emergency manager and it looked like the city was going to turn the corner financially, the banks, big banks, Bank of America, Chase Bank, those were the two culprits that I heard of, sent uh, people out, sent representatives out who knocked on people's doors and offered them like $20,000, $10,000 if they signed the deed of their property over. That's when people realized that something was up because those same homes 
are no value that you know it 350 400 000. are you serious you do you see what i'm saying and people were so desperate because they were so underwater with the taxes on their homes they just wanted to get out from under it so people literally sold their birthright and then went to rent somewhere to live somewhere else is that not redlining talk about gentrification so i was telling you about corktown so a few years ago uh i was writing a grant i wanted i hired a grant writer i wanted someone to do something and she said you really want to know what's going on let me take you on a ride so she took me down to corktown i wasn't even familiar with that neighborhood and she showed me what gentrification was doing in that community the place is surrounded it's off trumbull right that's downtown detroit the place is surrounded by broken buildings and so on but right in that little neighborhood white people had started moving in and the city when dugan became mayor guess what he did that started the gentrification if white people would move back to the city the city gave them twenty thousand dollars to buy a property and start fixing up the property but did not offer the twenty thousand dollars to blacks that's what the current mayor did <laughs> hello so when we say that they're overtaxing black homeowners we know what we're talking about so white folks were given twenty thousand dollars to buy property if they were going to own or occupy it but that same uh, condition was not extended to black to black homeowners hence the reason why we have seen a lot of white folks have moved back into the city smile smile and say Jesus loves me right they did that in Atlanta yeah right all of them should be thrown in prison I agree with you and it, guess what if you go to the city to, or the county to negotiate a payment if you miss a payment they call it a tax foreclosure matter of fact even the treasurer for the county was caught up in a scandal where he used his position to buy property right used his position because he had access to the tax rolls so he could see whose property was going looked on a property and bought the property and he still has his job this is corruption at the highest levels uh his name is sabri yeah because his name appears on tax documents everywhere on property tax documents that is this is redlining and not only is this redlining this is what you call this is gentrification this is just just call it what it is it's racial discrimination against black property homeowners that's what it comes down to so people who are struggling like I went to the tax office a couple days ago I might have mentioned that uh, on a previous podcast I think it was Tuesday and there was a grandma paying her taxes there were so many seniors paying taxes trying to hold on to the homes that they have lived in now check this out these folks probably have owned their homes for a while right so chances are they've paid their mortgage off they've paid off a 30-year mortgage right so what's the point in paying off your 30-year mortgage to go rent somewhere for eight night for nine hundred eleven hundred thirteen hundred dollars a month if you're on a fixed income what's the point there's no point to that is there none at all so they're trying to hold on to their homes and instead they have these abnormally high these astronomically high uh, tax ta uh, tax property taxes now according to the Detroit News they looked at a time frame 2010 to 2017 right they investigated 63,000 homes and you know the Detroit News they don't they're not telling no lie they did their, their they did their background so by the time they come to the mayor and say this is what we found they're not ifing they're not budding they're not oh I'm sorry I made a mistake it is what it is and in the in that investigation they uncovered it presented it to the mayor and the mayor said well I have programs I can't correct the past well how long has he been mayor this is his second four-year term that started in 2018 so the period that was covered was when 2010 to 2017 he became mayor in 2014 right so guess who between 2014 and 2017 what did he do he got involved with the detroit land bank 
and in getting involved with the Detroit Land Bank, they uncovered a heck of a corruption. So what they were doing was forcing homes into tax foreclosure so it could end up in the Detroit Land Bank, yeah? And so that guess who could, so whomever could have access to it. As a matter of fact, <laughs> then they put up a bond issue and say, you know, if, you, if it's part of a bond or whatever, it's just unbelievable. From what I have learned, I think there's some form of gentrification taking place in Atlanta. So I can only say to the folks in Atlanta, you better watch out and go check on your seniors. Because if your grandmama and mama and such own a piece of land in Atlanta, go own that stuff. Because Tyler Perry has a movie studio down there, which means that what? It's the new Hollywood. So black folks are moving to Atlanta to get jobs from Tyler Perry Studios. White folks will be moving pretty soon because they see a value in that. So if you know people in Atlanta who own property in the city off Atlanta, go get them. Help them pay off the property because that's gonna be worth something. I'm telling you about this, this neighborhood called Corktown in Detroit. The old Detroit train station. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you. We're gonna look at this in, 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 in full blown. I'm gonna be honest with you. The previous administrations in Detroit some of those people really should be serving time for real, right? They did the city no good. They did nothing to uplift the city, nor did they do anything to keep the neighborhoods intact. They cut off the services that keep a city running, like there was no garbage collection. Kwame Kilpatrick, whom they're all saying, free Kwame, free Kwame my foot. Kwame discontinued a bus service to pick up kids to go to school. He cut that out of the budget. He discontinued garbage pickup and told the residents of the city that they should take their garbage down to the city dump. I kid you not. Kwame Kilpatrick cut off street lights in the city. I kid you not. This is not just a Kwame thing. This started with previous administrations, Archer and all the black mayors, Coleman Young, whom is well celebrated, all of them. They did not do the city any good, right? So the city has been lapsing for some time. This was kind of a cumulative effect. So when Dugan says, it really didn't start with me, it really didn't, the thing is, it's kind of true. It's, it's a way of him absolving himself of any responsibility, but at the same time, he did take over in 2014. He should have, that's the first thing that he should have looked at if he had the interests of black homeowners at heart. I don't believe that he did not because he's white but because it's not his problem it's kind of like it doesn't mean anything to him so he wouldn't have looked at it because it doesn't affect him and at the time the people who worked for him even if they were black nobody lived in the city because the city didn't have street lights the garbage wasn't being picked up and crime was unspeakable you couldn't even walk down the street in detroit or drive down the street there were broken bottles and trash all over the place we're not talking about a third world country we're talking about one of the greatest American cities of the 20th century. We're talking about the place that made automation great. The place of innovation that made automotive industry something to be seen the world over. We're talking about the place where black music proliferated. And this is what is left broken down neighborhoods. And politicians have the nerve, y'all, to come looking for people's votes everywhere and smiling and glad handling and the people are poor and disenfranchised and seniors are abandoned and they're picked on by criminals every time they get a social security check there are more liquor stores on every freaking corner of detroit i said the word freaking because it is what it is every street corner of detroit has at least two liquor stores there are liquor stores that sell liquor, that sell drugs, that sell everything, but uplift humanity. It is so bad. They have the Detroit Police Department has something called Green Line, where they put up green lights to indicate that they they have cybersecurity, so they're monitoring the streets to see what kind of crime is being committed, much like they do in London. You know, London has CCTV coverage everywhere. Well, Detroit now has that. So they get local businesses to put up a camera so they can watch the activities that take place on certain streets. There's some places in Detroit that you don't drive through, you don't go to. There is a zip code in Detroit called 482-DIE. 
Did you hear me? 4820 die. You know what the actual zip code is? 48205. You know why they call it 48200 die? Because you don't survive past 25 if you make it to 25. That's a long haul. In that zip code, if somebody is caught driving with a gun, they get an automatic 10 to life. If a gun is used in the commission of crime, they're gone for life. That's how bad the crime is in that zip code. Detroit is a very large city and the zip codes sometimes span huge areas. I used to, when I look at maps of Detroit from 50, 60 years ago, I, I wondered myself, how did they monitor all these areas? Because it was a really huge city. Up until before the year 2000, the population of Detroit was 1 million. And then when things started to slide, people just flew across 8 Mile. And the rest, as they say, is history. The current population of Detroit is about 400,000 to 500,000. Now, there, there's a census this year in 2020. So after the census, we're probably going to get a good head count. Between now and then, I expect at least 30,000 people to die by gun violence. I kid you not. The murder rate is horrific. I feel for policymakers, but I also feel at the same time that enough is not being done. I don't believe that they have the interests of people at heart. I, I, am cha I know they listen to me and I know they watch me. So I'm challenging the people from the mayor's office, including the mayor and the police chief. You know, I, you know, you know, I like me some police chief, uh, chief Craig, right? But I'm challenging you all. And especially Mr. Sabri, the, uh, the Wayne County Treasurer. I'm not a friend of his. And I don't suspect that I ever will be because I believe they're part of a system that overtaxes seniors out of their homes. My mother was one of those. It was horrible. I could not believe when I used to read, I'm like, why are you paying so much for taxes? And people in Southfield and so on are not paying this much. And if, if, when they pay it, it's equal to the property value. Do you see what I'm saying? And I'm saying to all of you, you all suck. Find a solution, you can do it. Don't tell me you can't. You just feel like you have won and you are better than the people. I went down to the county to pay some property taxes recently. And I saw seniors. I started telling you about grandmas who own their property. It, it was a study in humanity, the despondency. These people have been subjected to racism and the effects of racism most of their lives. And even up until now, at the winter of their lives, they're still dealing with the after effects of racism. Property values that do not match the value of your home. If you can get a house, go to the Detroit Land Bank. If they have uh, abandoned houses up for, to show you how bad it is. If you own a home in Detroit and there is an abandoned house next to yours, the city is selling you that lot for $100. Can you please tell me why should you pay taxes of fifteen and seventeen hundred dollars on something worth a hundred dollars? Can you tell me? Matter of fact, let's look at it this way. Why is the Detroit Water Authority sending out water bills to people who own vacant lots where no houses exist on? Do you see what I'm saying? And you want to tell me that's not redlining? I did a study one time on redlining and what I found out was that this gentrification that has become a phenomenon all over the country, when white folks start moving back into neighborhoods, they get loans. The same loans that the black homeowners who have jobs would not qualify for. So they get loans and because they get loans, they apply for more money and immediately the property value is appraised at a higher value. So it pushes out uh, black homeowners who can't afford to get the same loan to improve their property. Those things are policy. They're, they're a policy construct. So they're not a fly by night. This is not something a floozy. This is not something that, oh, that's just happenstance. It's not. It's direct redlining. It's a policy that is created with a distinct purpose of eradicating and removing black homeowners from their properties. My, my timeline is burning up here on Twitter. Lord have mercy. You guys are on fire this morning. Jesus. 
right? They will tax you out. It's happening all over the country, true. They will tax you out. Oh, wow. Harlem. Wow. Jesus, have mercy, my people. My people. Isn't it crazy? The kind of stuff. You, it makes you wonder. I, I'm looking at older, older black folks. And I'm seeing a look in their eyes of just dispiritedness. I used to think that they were just tired from having lived so long. But I've come to understand that this, they're just dispirited. It's the fight of a lifetime. You get tired of fighting public policy. You get tired of fighting racism. You just simply get tired of the BS. You get tired of it. And it's time for it to stop. So now it's making it more difficult. All this redlining and gentrification means something, right? You, know, you realize that. What it actually means is that young black people are going to find it even more difficult to start off from a base of home ownership and property ownership. Because if their parents didn't have it, then they won't have it. I looked at a recent uh, story in the New York Times that talked about why blacks were doing so badly in the wealthiest state in the country. There, were an, there was an abnormal amount, an astronomically high number of black folks in California, especially around the Los Angeles area, who were homeless. And what they looked at, it was directly attributed to redlining. So the same thing, right? Black homeowners were taxed out of their property. They didn't have property. The next generation went to jail because they either did drugs or they broke the you know they broke the law by stealing something yeah and then they would they come out of jail and they don't have anywhere to go the next generation worked but they work jobs and they can't you know property values in LA are so high it's all parts of California especially around San Francisco they can't afford to live there they lose a job lose their home lose their place of abode their dwelling and what they found was that it's directly attributed to redlining. This is why I say it's a system. It's a system. So you're getting rid of the figurehead that occupies the position. You really need to eliminate the position. It's a system. It's a system, my friends. It's a system. It's directly designed to dispossess and disenfranchise blacks from owning any property or owning anything my friends we got to do something about that years ago i lived in central florida my first kind of uh encounter with redlining i lived in central florida right i lived in a subdivision granted we bought into the subdivision because we could afford to or so we thought it was a good school district that was my primary motivation right and but we were surrounded by mostly white people but okay so i like the house i want to live there i didn't see the big deal i just liked where i live right it's a highly organized criminal enterprise you're right about that but what i found out was this we became friendly with our neighbor the neighbors on both sides it was a cul-de-sac and the people who lived in front of us so we started like everybody does you know, we started talking about, well, how much are you paying for your house? Much to my surprise, I found out that all my neighbors were paying two to three hundred dollars less for the same property value. Even the house that had a pool when ours didn't have a pool, they were paying less than we were. I didn't quite, I didn't put it down to redlining because I was unaware of that public policy. But what I did figure out was that something is very wrong. So it was a Friday evening when I found that out. Monday morning, I called the mortgage company. And I said, I want you to tell me why my white neighbors are paying less mortgage than I do. And I found out that I earn more than they, my husband and I earn more than they. And that we have more equity in our house than they do. So why are we paying more mortgage? Is this a race thing? Is it because they're white and we are black? They redacted the mortgage by $250. I kid you not. Then I became aware. I said to myself, then if that is the case, 
it must be happening with our credit cards. So I called the credit card company, same thing. I said, if you don't fix this, I'm gonna call the news and accuse you of racism. Then I looked at the cars. <laughs> I said, my God, it's the same thing with the car companies, the car loans. So I called them. We went, wanted to go buy a truck, we went down to the dealership to go buy a Toyota 4Runner, went down there. And I said, listen to me very carefully. I'm paying down this much, and this is the amount that I'm gonna pay per month. And if I'm not paying that based on credit and how much I'm paying down, then I'm taking my business elsewhere, but back that up, I'm gonna call the news media and tell you you're racist. Because if I find out that the white guy who just bought the same car is paying less than me, you're in trouble. That was my first encounter with racism and how racism directly is tied to financials to dispossess and disenfranchise people of color from owning. And, and, and after that, the funny thing is after that, we bought another house, bought a bigger house in, you know, in another subdivision. The fu by this time now, I'm aware. So what happens is when we went to negotiate with the developer, right? I told my ex, I said, let me talk, <laughs> right? We're gonna get this house <laughs> for what I wanna pay, what we gonna pay for it. And I kid you not, I found out that they were in Florida, you could pay $500 down on a house at the time and you had a commitment, right? So you could just go to closing and bring the rest of the money to closing. And they do it a little differently down there than they do here in Detroit. What was another thing I learned, right? And so we found out that there were other people whom they were collecting money on on the same property. I said, so you do, you're do you doing this because you think you're slick? I said, I'm gonna call channel four. We ended up getting a bigger house in a better subdivision for way less, right? I am telling you, if you see it, you gotta call it out. Do not be afraid to call it out. You have to address it. Because if you don't, they're just gonna continue doing it and they're gonna assume that you are unaware, you're stupid, you don't know, and they're going to continue to push the public policy. And you can't trust anybody who is a politician. Not because there's a black person occupying the seat does that mean that they're looking out for your best interest because we're finding out that finally, after years and years, they got a Wayne County Commissioner of Taxes who is a black person, but he's no different than the white guy who was there for hundreds of years. So all they did was change the person, but the position, they changed the figurehead, but the position is still the position. Do you see what I'm saying? Because all he does, he did the same thing. They caught the Detroit News, published an investigation about a year or so ago where they caught him in a scandal. He had to come forward and say, well, I did buy the property. He, he and his family bought property because they had access to the Detroit Land Bank, the same corrupt machinery that the, the mayor is connected to. So what happens now? What happens? According to the mayor, he says that he can only treat this going forward. So they are bringing property tax appraisals that they did in 2017 in line with current property values. I don't know how true that is. Let me just read what people. How did they tax only blacks? Because mostly blacks live in Detroit. Uh, and they gave uh, white folks the incentive of $20,000 to move back to the city. What is it called when black mayors and governors steal from poor black folks with corruption? Still a criminal enterprise. That's what I call it. It's still racist. <laughs> Somebody says, I'm your daddy. Are you my daddy? No, he died. <laughs> I'm pretty sure of it. He's laying in a grave in Maryland. He's pretty, he's pretty gone. We're pretty sure of it, right? And we have the pictures to prove it. So thank you for wanting to be my daddy. But do you see what I'm saying? What, somebody is asking, uh, what is, what do you call a, a black mayor and governor who perpetuate the same thing? They're still racist. They're part of the establishment. They're part of the redlining. They're carrying out the policy. So have they essentially changed or done anything significantly different that is going to help people? No, they're not. They're still the same. And this is the reason why you have to pay attention to politicians and what they say. Hey, the reason I'm talking about it is not just because it's a Detroit thing, but because it happens, it's happening in your city. 
If you live in a major city, watch out, it's happening. It's happening all over the country. And we, if we're not a careful, you will find that houses and property that have been in your family for a generation is gone. Let's look at it this way. When the Great Migration began in the 1900s, in the early part of the 20th century, and blacks began moving to the north, right? They moved to Chicago, Detroit, Milwaukee, Cleveland, DC, all along the Eastern Seaboard, New York, and so on. Those folks bought property eventually. Well, the intention was that that property was to be carried to the generations, just like in other cultures. White people do that, right? They own the property, they, send, they, they will it, they pass on, they will it to the next generation. What that does is that uh, makes uh, the next generation, it situates you and positions you for wealth because you can claim that you own property. Well, I wasn't born in this country, but where my family are from in, in, in my home country, they own land to this day, right? So there's still land that is still available. This is why I tell folks, go buy land. Go buy property. Own something that you can deed to the next generation. It's going to position them to have access to wealth. You ever seen when your parents die and you live way over in California and, 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 and they live in Detroit, but they leave you a house with something on it and you can sell that and make a quick, quick $20,000. And you say, well, you know, grandma, you know, mom and dad did leave me something. Have land. This is what they're trying to do is disenfranchising and dispossessing people of what they own. Now, the truth of the matter is, I'm not making any friends by, by saying this, but this is not about friendship. This is about where public policy has gone awry and is hurting people and people of color, in particular black folks, where public policy has administered and executed by even black people in power that is hurting black people. And this, it could have been my mother. When I, what I saw on those seniors' faces, it could have been my mother. It could have been, and I remember walking out the room and I was like, what if this were mom? This could happen to anybody. To personalize this, there was a, 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 a grandma who was paying her taxes and she said the amount that was required for her to pay her taxes, she said, I cannot pay it all today because I promised my great granddaughter that I would help pay her enrollment fee at Michigan State University, right? And she said, I will come back next month when I get my social security and I will come back and pay it off. That rang home for me, that personalized that for me. She's trying to hold on to the property while at the same time giving the next generation a level up so she can finish her education. Do you see what I'm saying? And this is what I want the mayor. I know you're listening and the people at the Detroit City Council. I need you all to be get proactive. I need you all to start passing resolutions and passing ordinances that is going to stem the tide of black owners leaving their homes and being taxed out of their homes. It is a blight and it is unbelievable. It's kind of like poverty is a crime. Being poor is a crime. So you are making it worse by make, taxing them out of their homes. I don't know how, I'm calling out the, 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 the uh, tax collector in Wayne County, Mr. Sabri. I don't know how you sleep at night. Seriously, Mr. Sabri, Eric Sabri, how do you sleep at night? I want to know, how do you sleep at night? You sleep well, don't you? Not for long. Not for long, because you're going to be troubled by dreams when you see all the faces of all the people whom you have taxed out of their homes, all the seniors, all the people who can't afford to, but you're pay they're paying more in taxes than the property is worth. And you think that the boys on Wall Street got away with it? Most of them are, have died of heart attacks in the years since. Go check it out. So if you think you're going to get away with it, no. The same goes true for the mayor. I don't think the mayor is getting a third term. I think he's done. Because the people are fed up. They thought he was going to be the great white hope who was going to bring a deliverance to the city. He fixed up downtown where he and his boys can have a drink in that restaurant on top of the GM Tower. And they can look out at the river between Detroit and Windsor, Canada. 
and think they own the city and they own Michigan and ha 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 like a rich man's laugh. I dare say that you're both going to be troubled in your dreams for what has happened to black homeowners in the city. You're going to be troubled. It's going to sit on you when you least expect it and it's going to bother you until you decide to do something about it. All these seniors, matter of fact, you don't believe me? Drive down Jefferson, go up Larned, go across Congress, go up Woodward. Look at the faces of the homeless. Every time you see one of those homeless, you need to ask yourself, all you policymakers who contribute to it, black and white alike, you need to ask yourself, I did this to these folks. I caused these people to be wandering the streets and not have a home to lay their heads in. And you need to hold yourself accountable. And even if you think you don't have a conscience, something else, God himself is going to trouble you all for doing this to people. It is unbelievable. It's inhumane. It's wicked. It's destructive. And it's painful. And it's painful for me because I can't do anything about it. You see what I'm saying? I can talk about it, but at the end of the day, I want relief. I want something palpable to be done to alleviate the suffering. When I look at people, I see people who are homeless and I'm like, I know you weren't always homeless. I know something must have happened, whether it's a mental health issue, but to think that people end up in nursing homes because they just frankly just give up. People had to move out of their homes and go live. I heard a story just this morning of one such case. He had to leave his home to go live with a family member. He died within six months, heartbroken from an alcohol related illness. Got a stroke because he couldn't possibly live. Lost his job, couldn't make the payments on the taxes. A house that had been passed down by his, his ancestors. I just heard that story this morning. Had nothing to do with my broadcast. I didn't call seeking a story. I was just talking to someone randomly. Someone called me and I said, how is so-and-so? And they started telling me, I said, how are you doing? And they just started telling me everything. You know how that works, right? People who have always lived in Detroit, who are, whose ancestors came up from the South. This is what they're experiencing. It's kind of like they left the South and left the Jim Crow laws then they came to the north and encountered the same system just called by a different name. A system that is being perpetuated to this day. You know what is the anger about it and the part about it that is painful? It's not just that it's the white person doing it. It's not the white establishment perpetuating some myth of white power or white supremacy or white economics or economic oppression. It's not that. It's the fact that you elect black people to ameliorate and alleviate the suffering and instead they perpetuate it they continue with it much to the surprise and the disappointment of the people of the public because you think that they would have had more compassion no they don't they're in it for the money just like everybody else and if they have to overtax other people to make it, they're gonna do it. Because at the end of the day, those people don't have consciences. They don't have a moral compass. All they have, they have no spirit. When you look in their eyes, they're dead. That's why alcohol is consuming them. Let them have their drink. Let them go sit down and drink until their livers dry up. Let them go drink until their pancreas are worn out. Let them get heart attacks and strokes. That's just payback for the pain and suffering that they have inflicted on an unsuspecting public. It's mind blowing. It's unbelievable. And I am hurt because I know folks caught up in the midst of it. People who are struggling to stay in their homes. And listen to me, not because the current value of the home is four or $500,000. You, you know, th this is how you know this is so inequitable. You drive through the city of Detroit and you see the same size house built and constructed the same way. You go to Royal Oak, Ferndale, uh, Birmingham, Berkeley, uh, all those other places. 
and you see the same size house built the same way what is that when i first came to the city i asked the same question is said, is this about real estate and location 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 because it's the same size house it's the same house just move it to a different location where other people, where white people occupy and it's valued more. That's redlining. You all need to be aware of that. Stop sitting back and being passive about some of these things. Be proactive. Start asking questions like me. So I'm not anybody's friend right now because I'm asking the tough questions and asking what are you going to do about these folks at the end of the day? It might make you uncomfortable that I'm asking the questions, but Mr. Politician, sir, Mr. Politician lady, Mr. Policymaker lady, while you are feeling important this morning, that sucks to be you, it didn't happen to me, and you're going to scroll on your phone, I hasten to reassure you that while you're doing that, somebody else is suffering. There is a grandma out there who is wondering how much longer she can stay in her house. There is a grandchild who lost their job and who has to move in with grandma. That if something happens to grandma and grandma loses the house, they won't be able to stay in the house. Where's your compassion, y'all? Where did your conscience go? Did it disappear when you signed up for the job? Did it disappear with your first paycheck of over 120000 a year? Did they buy you out? Was that what they did? They bought you out so you closed your eyes to the suffering of people? Is that what that is? Then I'm so glad that I'm not one of you. I'm so glad I didn't get that position. I'm so glad I didn't get that job. Because I don't know that I could have shut my eyes and shut my conscience to the suffering of people like that. It's crazy. I can't do it. I can't do it. I want to say that I think I can, but seriously, I can't. Not when I see how people are suffering and struggling to stay in their homes. It's crazy. And I'm not randomly just defending everybody because next thing they're going to say that Harry Kamek defends everybody in Detroit even the criminals no I'll tell you all lock the criminals up I want them off the streets I want the people who rob seniors on the first third and 18th or 25th of the month whenever they get their little social security checks I want those people off the streets the people who kill women and shoot women and put them in garbage cans and and rape women I want them off the streets The people who rob convenience stores, I want them off the street. Now, I'm going to tell you the honest truth. White folks don't do business in Detroit, but the Arabs do. So shout out to the Arab community who, in spite of crime and high crime, still operate gas stations and convenience stores in the city. You can say all you want, but at the end of the day, they still operate a small store where people can go and buy something to eat because there are no grocery stores. Meyer, a large uh, big box, opened one on Six Mile and I think one on Eight Mile and Woodward. That's as penetrative as it goes. Kroger disappeared. Are you hearing me? So where are people supposed to go? So they go to these stores operated by by Arab brothers and sisters who frankly are overpriced. The goods and services in there, when I had the shelter, we used to go to one close by to buy stuff. I was shocked. I'm like, why am I paying so much for this when I can go to a regular big box store and pay less? The prices are over, they're overpriced. I don't know that the meat is always fresh. I don't know if the the milk and so on is maintained fresh. But at the same time, I still have to say the Arab community still are willing to operate businesses in Detroit. Otherwise, the citizens, there's a depletion of businesses. There's no investment. This is what I call infrastructural investment. The roads are, are bad and dug up. Eight Mile East needs to be fixed after Woodward. Come on now. They fixed parts of the bridge over I-75. Eight Mile East needs to be fixed, Mr. Mayor. Eight Mile East needs to be fixed. Come on. Fix the roads. You collect the taxes, you overtax the citizens. Fix the roads. Get rid of the blight. Tear down the abandoned buildings. Nobody is in it. It's a blight on property value. The same property value that you have depleted, that you're overtaxing people, but you still have an abandoned building next door that is a den of crime. Hire more police officers. There are 24 to 2,800 police officers in the city of over half a million people. 
unbelievable. So how many detectives? Maybe 40, 40 detectives to investigate crime? Hire more police officers. I don't care if there's an attrition rate, hire police officers. Hire more police officers. Let there be more patrols. It's a deterrent against crime. There's a police officer who patrols up and down seven mile and so on. I like him. He's fearless. I think the whole community loves him. He's just fearless. The dude just drives his cruiser and he's nodding at everybody. The people even got to know him. I even had to stop one day and say, but this dude drives fast all the time. You see what I'm saying? The people got to know him. He has goodwill. They see him. He's nodding. They're nodding. Put the police out there in the community. The police don't want to come out. I don't blame them. They don't want to be killed. Put more police officers out there. Turn the lights on. The lights are on in most cities, in most streets, most of the neighborhoods. The garbage is being picked up. But get rid of the blight so that people's property values at least can rise higher. So a grandma, like the one I met the other day, can leave something to her great-granddaughter that they can sell so she can go finish her master's program. She proudly stated her granddaughter is studying something with the brain. That means she wants to be a neurosurgeon. <laughs> right? Well, she's going to need that property value to be sold so she can pay off her medical bill, her medical school. Right? Get back to the business of being people. Is it enough? Politicians. You know the word politicians start with a P. Take note. The word preachers start with a P. But people has one commonality with it. They all start with a P. It takes all of us to do this. There's this African proverb, it takes a village to raise... To, but if the village is sick... Everyone is going to die. If the village is overtaxed, then there will be no village. Is that the is that the end game? Is that the end game? I see tattoo parlors springing up all over the place, right? But you know what? I'm also seeing cannabis. Is that a good thing? Yeah, we want everybody to be high in the city so you can lock up more people. I don't think that's a good idea. Right? But do you see, so I'm saying to all of my followers, all of my friends, if this is happening here, I'm, I've pointed it out, I've levered myself, made myself transparent, laid my pain out before you so you can take lessons from what I have seen and experienced so you can go tell others who are in other cities be careful because this could happen Baltimore. This could happen in New York. It probably is. It already is happening. It's happening right where you are. We need to go back to being property owners. I've even asked people who live outside of Detroit. I'm like, why don't you all go back and buy some of the property that you ran away from, that your grandparents had started? Go back and buy it. Change the paradigm. Go back and pay off the taxes and buy it. Just buy anything. Own it. Right? It's one thing that you have a mortgage for 30 years in a community where you feel fairly sure that your property value will appreciate. That is, even after you retire, you'll still be paying it off. Unbelievable. And I'm asking all of you, I'm going to make this humble suggestion, just like I found out in my experience. Check with your neighbor. Find out how much they're paying on their mortgage as compared to yours. You might be surprised. For those of you who live in, how shall I say, diverse neighborhoods or in neighborhoods where your neighbors don't look like you, get to know them and find out how much they're paying on their mortgage. You're going to be shocked. Just like I found out when I lived in Central Florida, when I, I found out that my neighbors who were white were paying $250 less on their mortgage for similar property values. It never happened to me after that because I called, right? You can, we can't, you see what I'm saying? We can't just sit back. Don't just sit back. Let's do something, right? I gotta go. Uh, I've exceeded my time. My time is up. This is Harriet Kim. I put down to earth. I'm gonna post the link to the story on the Detroit News. I give a shout out to the Detroit News. 
for always keeping us informed. I'm humbled by your investigation. Big shout out to the people at News. Did an awesome job on this story. Fearless reporting. Just totally fearless. I applaud you and shout out to you. I do hope the mayor and the uh, county commissioner of taxes, the county treasurer, I do hope you guys are going to sit down and do something about disbanding the Detroit Land Bank. It's a ripoff filled with corruption, robbing people out of their homes, and then taking that same property and rolling it up and inflating the value of it. Come on now, come on. And then have the nerve to come and tell people, well, we're gonna create something better. No, you're gonna make a lot more money and some of that money is going into your pocket, right? Thanks so much, everybody. This is Harriet Kemmock with Down to Earth. I'll see you on Sunday morning as we continue to talk about the issues that matter. Sunday mornings we talk about faith and its impact on our lives. This is Down to Earth. You can find me on Spotify, Spreaker, uh, and a bevy of other podcast platforms. If you are listening to this broadcast, know that you can share this with your friends who have Android devices. You can find me on Podcast Public, right? Podcast Addicts. There are so many podcast platforms. I'm just grateful that doors have opened. I thank you so much. I'm humbled by your participation. To all my Twitter followers and Periscope followers, much love. Thank you so much for sharing your Friday morning with me. I hope this brought some clarity to your to some of the ideas that you might even be thinking. Thank you for your participation. You guys blew it out of the ballpark. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. Have a good Friday. No drink and drive. Please, dear God, please. I thank you so much. This is Down to Earth. Thanks, everybody. Be blessed.